So it's probably live at the moment. It's not saying it is yet, but. So there's always this moment of where I'm like blankly staring at the screen. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it on mute as well so we don't get an echo. Yeah. I'm sorry for anyone who's just watching this and watching me stare blank. <laughs> I'm just waiting for a moment before we start and let some people get in and put this background noise on mute. <laughs> Do -do -do. Oh my gosh, I think I really have to clean up my computer. <laughs> I, I, I do too. Mine's like quite <laughs> these legs. <laughs> it's like that constant like <laughs> the rainbow wheel. <laughs> like, oh my god. Um, oh no, it's <laughs> Watching oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, I can hear myself. Stop, stop. Oh. Okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> Yay. All right. Um, so, okay, so for anyone who is joining us, oh, my gosh, I don't even know how many. We've done over two dozen episodes now. Um, so I often forget to mention what reflation is um, before, <laughs> in case anyone is new. Um, so reflation started in uh, COVID time um, as a way for us to continue sharing, um, you know, what our skills and our knowledge and still keep the community going strong. So um, so yeah, so that's why we're here. And uh, my name is Sophie, um, and uh, I'm known as your equal friend. And today we have Lex, who is the who's the founder and fashion designer behind Neo Tenny. Am I saying that right? Okay, that's correct. Yeah, <laughs> Neo Tenny Carol. Awesome. <laughs> Um, and she's going to share with us um, garment care, which I'm really excited about. There's a ton of things that I have been wanting to learn about, but I keep forgetting. So this is really <laughs> exciting. Um, and uh, before we get started, um, we um, just want to give a land acknowledgement. Um, so we, um, the Weeselation team, who may join us a little later, um, um, are in Toronto and Lex is in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. um, so this is for our areas. Um, so we wish to acknowledge that the cities of Hamilton and Toronto are situated upon the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, and the Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the land is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabek to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. So today these cities are home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island and we recognize that we must do more to learn about the rich history of this land so that we can better understand our world as residents, neighbors, partners, and caretakers. Um, and a little action item that um, we'd like to um, put out there is um, to learn more about disproportionate um, environmental racism um, by First Nations communities. You can check out the um, film if you haven't seen it already. It's excellent. Um, there's something in the water um, which highlights um, some really <laughs> terrible events um, on the east coast of Canada. But this happens all around Canada and in other nations as well. Um, but there is uh, an event next week, I believe on October 21st, um, we will share that info um, with a panel discussion and viewing around um, that film. So without further ado, um, Lex, I'll, uh, I'll let you take it from here. Hey, thanks, Sophie. Yeah, um, thank you. So uh, again, my name is Lex. 
I am the designer for Neo Tenny Apparel. Um, my focus is creating limited run and like made to order apparel and accessories with like a more holistic approach and to create like a better relationship with fashion. Um, you can follow me if you want at Neotni Apparel on Instagram if you want to keep up with my journey. Um, but today I'm I highly very- recommend you do too. <laughs> super, super cool stuff. Um, I wanted to first say thank you for having me. I'm really like honored to be a part of the Resolution series that helps us all stay together as we try to virtually socialize. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and yeah, today I'm going to be sharing with you my perspectives and insights surrounding conscious wardrobe. Um, I put together a little presentation to help me illustrate um, these concepts better. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, hopefully this goes well. <laughs> Uh, oops, I make this full screen. All right, uh, that should be good. Yeah, good, cool. Okay, Let's so see. there are four main areas which I would like to discuss. So the first is things you just think about before you buy. The second is assessing the quality of garments. The third is understanding how to care for your clothing. And then I just want to chat a little bit about the end of life cycle um, for apparel. So before you buy, um, let's be honest, retail therapy is real. Uh, I personally love shopping and I feel like it's in our human nature to want to bring like newness into our life, whether that be firsthand or secondhand. Um, I mean, like who doesn't like finding like the cutest new thing to add to their outfits. I'm guilty. Uh, same, same. <laughs> but buying ex- clothing in excess has become a very normalized concept in our society. Um, I believe it's the best way to see how far we've come from ethical apparel and textile practices is to gain a little perspective by looking into the past. So today, uh, let's talk about apparel quantity which is crazy. Um, Today, fashion is made to make you feel very out of trend, literally by like the very next day, with the goal of making you buy as many pieces as possible with and as much as possible per purchase. The rate at which clothing is mass produced not only outweighs our demand for it exponentially, there's literally like in the fashion calendar season, there's now 52 micro seasons, including a resort and pre-fall, whatever that is. Like, I have no idea what that is. But that's like almost a, a season per week, which is like mind blowing. So it's it's quite unnecessary. Um, and it's obviously negatively impacting our environment, our water and our health. Um, people used to have their clothes made by professional seamstresses and tailors. They used to literally remodel and refurbish their older garments to update their fashions. Um, working class people may have only had like a few outfits, like two to five outfits max. Um, and if you were lucky enough to have a larger bu- budget, then your wardrobe would probably reflect that, but it was very minimal. Um, textile quality. So today textiles are produced obviously in excess quantities with the goal being to produce the most for the cheapest price rather than like a high quality, long lasting textile. That's good for us and the environment. So for this reason, we see apparel being produced with literally like carcinogenic warning labels attached to them. Like my sister bought this pair of pants off of like fast fashion monster fashion Nova. And they literally came with a tag on them. That's like, these pants were made using a dye that has like carcinogenic properties. And I'm like, you're putting that on your skin. Like, don't wear these. It was, it's a bit crazy. Um, oh my God. So- yes. I've seen those tags where they say like, please, I never saw that it said carcinogenic like material, but like, I saw that there's like, you need to wash these a few times before you wear them because there's dye. Yeah, I've seen like washing ones, which it makes sense for over dyed things. But like when it comes with something that's like, oh, I've never seen one before until she ordered this. And I was like blown away that people probably just chop them off and they're like, oh, whatever, I'm gonna wear this. And it's like, red flag, red flag, red flag, you know? (laughs) Yeah, Um, you have that like smoking label thing on it, like a picture that's like (laughs) a picture of like what your skin will look like after wearing it for so long. (laughs) Honestly, the scary thing is, is like we don't really even know what those effects are either. So it's just, it's crazy. But fun fact, once upon a time, 
textiles such as like lace and silks were literally so limited and valuable that they would actually be illegally smuggled into countries to be sold. So you could literally go to jail as being like a textile smuggler. So like crazy, we've come a long way. <laughs> no kidding, holy. Yeah. yeah, so now we're living with the consequences of excess textile waste and not knowing what to really do with it. Um, ethical practices, which I'm sure you're aware of. Um, now it's more common knowledge than before, but at one time, fashion did have a more localized approach where you would need to connect with your local seamstresses or tailors to literally design together and create the apparel that you would wear. So it's like no one had the same thing. Um, there's a misconception that fashion should be inexpensive because of how cheaply it can be made in today's society. When we purchase firsthand clothing at an in inexpensive rate, somewhere along the way, there is a cost associated with it whether it's like the workers are being paid unfairly, the textiles are being produced in an unethically or environmentally harmful way, or the quality and fit of the garment is jeopardized affecting the longevity of the garment itself. So it's like someone's paying for that price break that you're getting. <laughs> um, and also this puts like small designers such as myself in like constant competition with low price points of fast fashion as, be, as people begin to like expect that clothing costs next to nothing so it's like yeah you're constantly having to like justify yourself yeah it's hard to navigate but yeah. we're working on it <laughs> i have <laughs> hope <laughs> um so questions to ask yourself before you buy i like to think of my wardrobe as like um a balanced ecosystem of sort the, like stay with me here <laughs> i love there's, that there's an interconnectedness with like all components involved um so in nature, this may look like the environment, the greenery, the animals, um, but in fashion, in my fashion ecosystem, I think it consists of A, the person making it, the person buying it, and the reusability of the garment at its end life. So I think about all these things before I'm buying, but in an ecosystem, there must be balance. So that means there can't also be too much of one thing and too little of something else. So for example, I love sweaters. I have way more than I'm comfortable with admitting. <laughs> it's a bit much. And it's um, sweater weather. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> but um, this also prompts me to stay away from sweaters when shopping because one more, if I buy one more, it literally might upset the balance of my wardrobe ecosystem. <laughs> Alternatively, having too little of something like, like pants, for example, I don't have that many pairs of pants, um, but having too little of something but more wear on these garments that's necessary so it causes them to deteriorate faster and then it also causes you to replace them sooner so when shopping I'm like oh I need pants like I can add more pants to my wardrobe so having like a mindset around like a healthy balanced wardrobe ecosystem helps us make good shopping decisions um to help maintain this balance I like to ask myself these questions a, do I already own something similar? If the answer is yes, then I'll probably leave it because the best option is using what you have. Um, am I actually going to wear it? So you need to think in outfits here, like instead of being like, oh, this one piece, I love it. I do this all the time when I'm in the thrift store. I'm like this super loud piece. I gravitate towards it because I love bright colors and craziness, but then I'm like, Will I actually wear this? Can I make an outfit with what I already own wearing this? And if the answer is no, then I'm just probably, you should probably leave it. <laughs> um, and then the last is, do you actually want this? Um, there's so many pressures nowadays for like sales and marketing and trend setting and all this stuff like seeping into our decision making, whether or not we know it. So it's like important to recognize whether you actually like, you need to take a moment and be like, do I actually want this? Like meditate on it on the spot. <laughs> and then if you, yes, then okay, go for it. But if not, then you don't, you, you shouldn't buy it. Um, another Wise great, words. pardon? <laughs> Wise words. <laughs> um, another great deciding factor for when you purchase a garment should be, underlined, bolded, should be quality. <laughs> Um, and honestly, a great indication of understanding how well a garment is made is understanding what it's made out of. So we're going to get into a bit of textiles here because that is really what understanding what it's made out of means is understanding the textiles. So it's important to understand this because if you regress fabric all the way back to its beginnings, 
we're, 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 we're here with fibers. They're lo- so fibers are like the smallest part of textiles, which are then spun into threads, which create filaments. Think of like a very, very long continuous strand of hair. So creating very, very skinny, long pieces of filament to then be knit, woven, mat, or bound to create textiles. So fibers can be either natural or synthetic. Synthetic fibers, man-made, derived from chemicals. Um, They're created for specific benefits such as super absorbency or to dry faster or to dye easier. They can be like mildew or like abrasion resistant and they can have like minimal stretch or designed to like not wrinkle. So all these things that natural fibers can or can't do there that's why synthetic fibers are developed um so how they're made is you have to kind of think like liquid engineered plastic being forced through tiny holes to create long strands of filament so these strands are then processed into textiles so examples of common synthetic fibered fabrics are nylon, rayon, polyester, spandex, acrylic, and acetate, which are pretty common in like the fashion industry today. Um, But when washed, the downside is that these produce microplastics um, and they're hard to be filtered out from even just like our water. So that affects every aspect of our food chain basically. Um, And then it will have a negative effect therefore on us as well. Um, So natural fibers, they're derived from living organisms, so plants and animals, and they have so many natural built-in benefits, like they're so good. Um, like, I'm going to go through a couple. So cotton is biodegradable. It wicks away moisture, so it keeps you nice and dry. It's breathable. It's soft. Wool is naturally warm. It doesn't need pesticides or chemicals to be made. Um, it's durable, and it's like super absorbent, which makes it really good for dyeing. Um, silk really cool it's biodegradable lightweight and warm which is like contrasting um it's naturally fungal repellent and it's also like everyone knows it's soft and luxurious so that's cool um hey hey, hang on one second silk is warm as well yeah it's considered to be like a warm it keeps like heat it has like heat retention property to it so like i mean obviously like people wear it in like the the cooler summers like no one's gonna have like a silk winter coat because that would be a bit ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> but it actually does like retain heat when you oh, are wearing yeah. it yeah I did not know that yeah um and the cool thing is is that like natural fibers are often hypoallergenic I'm not sure if that's actually relative to wool I don't know how that works but I think most like plant um cellulose based fibers are technically hypoallergenic and they're also because they're grown considered to be a renewable resource so like that's awesome um but don't let rayon fool you it is derived from a cellulose fiber but it has like extensive processing like extensive extensive processing in order to make it into a textile so it's technically like in your mind, you should consider it like a synthetic fiber, but a lot of companies use this as be like, oh, this is rayon. It's greenwashing all over. Like, it's ridiculous. So that's yeah. a common example of greenwashing, I find. Is that, yeah, right? Oh, God, it's so complicated. And it mm-hmm. weaves its way into every, hey, Lynn. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to say hi. I'm so sorry. I'm in like two meetings at once and I'm like I need to pop my head in and just say hi until I can come back and like be with (laughs) y'all okay I'll wait for you so nice to see you virtually it's so nice to see you too also your hair looks fabulous you too thank you (laughs) (laughs) but yes don't let me disrupt your presentation carry on Um, we just talk about fibers getting really into textile oh yeah sorry you were saying tensil is just the name of rayon isn't it like just or is tencel it- is, I believe it's it's different. Tencel is bamboo derived. Oh, okay. Um, whereas rayon, I'm not sure if it's bamboo. I think they have a different manufacturing process, if I'm not mistaken. Or oh, okay. it could potentially be that Tencel is the brand name and rayon is the generic name. So that's, that's what I was thinking. I think that's what I heard. But again, too. And then when it's like super confusing like that, it goes back to what you're saying. It's like, hmm, is it greenwashing? 
<laughs> yeah, a little bit of greenwashing going on there. Yeah. <laughs> And they try to confuse you like that. Like, it is like, how are you supposed to know what it's made out of when they're using all of the, like a, basically a maze to, <laughs> to guide you. It, it's, it's quite annoying. Yeah. Um, so mixed fabric composition is when natural and synthetic fibers are mixed to reap the benefits of both. So that's commonly what we're seeing if there is any natural fibers used in garments in fashion today. Um, ideally a garment would be like less than 20% synthetic, um, to maintain the majority of the benefits of like the natural fibers because our clothing is like directly on our skin, right? Sponge-like we absorb whatever is on it. And like, honestly, similar to like food, we should be considering the clothes that we're wearing. Like it, it, it's directly, you know, the more natural it is, the better for us it is, right? Um, recycled textiles are exciting to me. <laughs> They're like new, I would say within the last like five to 10 years, like they've been kind of on the verge, but now they're becoming more prevalent in fashion. Again, I think because trendy eco-friendliness is like trendy sometimes with fashion, like big corporate brands. So, which is good. They fund, um, most of the fabric production. Um, but it's so exciting to me because it's like, extending the life of post and pre-consumer textile waste. So it's like this whole cradle to cradle lifestyle effect in fashion. Um, and it's like a more recent technology due to the excess amounts of textile waste that we have to deal with. Um, the interesting thing though, is that it can be both synthetic. So you can get synthetic recycled fabric, you can get natural recycled fabric or combination. And it's mostly like, it's really, really hard to get recycled 100% natural um, fabric because of the combination mixed fabrics that are used to make garments. So you can't like separate it once it's like made, right? So it's like upcycling kind of like similar to recycling is like, it has to be, it kind of gets degraded as it keeps getting recycled and recycled and recycled. So I'm hoping, and I think they're working on it to be able to like make sorting facilities be able to produce 100% recycled cotton, for example, which would be like, oh, can't wait. <laughs> um, so how well it's made, I'm gonna share with you some indicators of what you can look for in your garment. So where it is made, I would say this can be like the biggest indicator for understanding the process that your garment was made in just based on geographic location of where fast fashion is like more likely produced. So look at your care labels, usually China, Bangladesh, and Vietnam, they're the major production areas for fast fashion. And it's honestly due to lower wages, less strict environmental and labor restrictions. So it's like, it's all bad, <laughs> but that's, I'm not saying that all clothes that come from there are bad, but like, it's a pretty good indication that it's fast fashion if it does come from there, cause they all have the infrastructure. Um, but made in Canada or wherever local, although it's, it's a bit rare, um, uh, is always best. I like to think about how far your clothing has traveled to you based on where it was made to. Um, but my hopes for the future are that we like see more support from local fashion brands. Wink, wink. <laughs> um, uh, is the fabric high quality for cotton based garments? A great way to check if the fabric is high quality. If you like scrunch it up, like like real tight, like scrunch it with your hands into like a ball. And then like, if it remains, and you let go, if it remains wrinkled, when you let go of it, it is um, probably treated with some kind of like agent that like helps it retain its shape. So cotton usually has a natural bounce back to it just based on the fiber composition. So it's like, it will probably lose its shape a lot if it ends up super, super wrinkly. <laughs> um, Fabric thickness is also a good indication. So if you hold up like your fabric to like the light, if it's super transparent, it's probably not gonna be the most durable fabric. So rule of thumb is like the thicker is always better. I'm not saying like go like half an inch thick, but like if you can compare <laughs> and that can help you in your decision-making, um, go for it. And then for knits, a great thing to do is like stretching them to see if they bounce back as well, because stretch retention and knitwear is important for the longevity of the garment, mostly because 
it needs to hold its shape. Um, so sorry, when you, so you're yeah. saying if I were to take like a t-shirt and crumple it up, if it keeps that kind of crumpled um, shape, then it's probably not well made. Is that what you're I would say, so not the whole t-shirt, just like take like or one like, layer, a handful, kind of like a little swatch part okay. of it. You crumple it up and it like, I'm not like, it shouldn't go back to be like completely ironed out smooth, <laughs> but it, like, if it like holds, like, the, like honestly doesn't move from where you crumpled it, then it's probably been treated with some kind of agent to help it retain its shape. And then over time when you're washing it, like that agent isn't permanent. So it probably the garment will therefore probably lose its shape as well. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, trims, trims are fun. Um, I advise you to test the hardware on all garments before buying them. This is probably the biggest area where people who produce garments love to cut costs in production. Um, good things to check for are the buttons secure. Are they reinforced? I've literally gone to like, I don't know, a store one time and I bought a new garment and I get it home and like the buttonholes are unraveling already. And I was just like, Okay. <laughs> awesome. So check that. Also, if they're even real buttonholes, like if the buttons are working, people like to cut costs by not making real buttons too, which is interesting. Um, zippers. You can zipper, you always test those zippers. That's like a huge, huge thing. <laughs> That's so crazy. Like, yeah. And they get away with it. Like people don't notice. And it just like, becomes oh, a norm. Like, ah, uh, yeah, I wore it a couple times. You know, what do you expect? It's just whatever. It's it's going to fall apart. Like, that's yeah. normal. Like, no, it's not normal <laughs> at <Yeah>. all. <laughs> um, yeah, so zippers. Um, ideally, metal zippers last longer than plastic ones, but you rarely find them in garments. So I would just, like, honestly, like, give it a good up and down, up and down, up and down. Make sure it's it's good before you buy it because they're usually one of the first things to go however they can be replaced too so it's not like end all be all but um a good sign is if there's a spare button involved that's a very good sign because then they're thinking like oh you're gonna have to replace the buttons which which naturally happens um but they're thinking about like you know you're gonna wear this garment for a long time and if they can help you out that little way by giving you a spare button they're, they're thinking about it which is good so that's usually a good sign um are the seams secure? So good quality garments are made using denser stitching. So stitches that are smaller and closer together. Um, so if you like have a garment and you just like pull gently on like the seams, I wish I had a garment here. I do. You like add a seam and you pull gently on it. I'm not saying like tug it apart because you don't want to rip it, but like pull gently on it. Um, if you, you shouldn't really be able to see like large gaps between the stitching. That's a sign that the, the quality um, of the machine that they're using wasn't, isn't ideal for that kind of fabric. Um, if the stitching is too loose, it can't handle that much tension either. And so it's probably gonna unravel sooner, whether that be from washing or wearing, and then it'll come apart. So any kind of reinforced seam is a good sign as well. And then, is it made for a long life cycle? So clothing that does not have appropriate hem allowances. This is a pretty good indication that it is not made for a long life cycle. So hem allowances, they're like, like a pea, they look like a piece of fabric on the interior of the garment around the entire part of the opening. So like on the bottom of your skirt on the inside, you should have like a folded over edge of fabric or like your pants, they should have a decent like hem on them. And like even t-shirts, like not that people really shorten or lengthen t-shirts, but if it's got a hem on it, they actually help keep the shape of the garment better. And it also allows for alterations if needed, which is great for tall people like me. <laughs> I didn't think uh, of that. Mm -hmm. little, little tips and tricks. So hair, which is fun. Um, well, I think it's fun. I could be a bit nerdy in saying that. <laughs> no, I mean, this is the part that I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad we're covering this because. Okay, I'm glad. glad. <laughs> <laughs> so like, obviously knowing how to care properly for your garments will increase their lifespan. So we're going to get into care labels, which are, it's like laundry language of its own, where your garments are telling you how to care for them. So 
all like legend, right? Um, most garments have care labels in them unless people literally cut them out because they're like itchy or uncomfortable, which I'm like, yes, but also that how do you care for your garment? How do you know what to do? What does the next person know how to do? Um, so I'm gonna kind of translate some of the symbols that are commonly seen. And they honestly look more complicated than they seem. Like once I explain it to you, I feel like you'd be like, oh, okay. Um, so first is like the water. Can you see my mouse or no? Yes. Okay, yes, cool. So like first is like the water basin, which is here. Um, so this talks about water temperature in your washing machine. So it's in degrees Celsius usually. Um, and the number on the inside indicates like what is the ideal temperature. So it's usually like, they can be like any number. They, some, this is just common 30, 40, 60, but I've seen like 95, like super hot or like, you know what I mean? But um, if they're, sometimes they also use dots and I'll explain the dots later, like instead of numbers, um, but it's to indicate the, t the temperature of water that you should be washing it in. And if there's a hand in the water basin, that means hand wash only. So I don't like those. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. like them either. I'm like, hand wash, come on. I, right? You're just like, oh, really? Like, I, honestly, like, I don't think people actually do it. It's just for, like, I have hand washing, but like, I, I can say I'm guilty. I've put it in the washing machine. But I, I think, honestly, it's also for, to take the liability off of the company if something happens to it. I've seen that really? also be done. <laughs> yeah. Like hand wash only. What are we in the 1800s? Let's be real. Um, <laughs> the next is the bleach symbol, which is this triangle one here. Oh. So most people assume that they can bleach all white things, which is not true. <laughs> um, if the triangle is white on the inside, like this one here, then bleach is okay to use. If there are small lines on the inside, that means non-chlorinated bleach only. And then if there is this big X through it, it doesn't have to be black. It could just be with an X through it and be white like this guy. Um, but that just means like, do not bleach, like do not bleach. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't really use bleach. I, honestly, I can't say I own much white clothing, but we'll get into that a bit later. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the next, this one here is like the dryer symbol. So I feel like they're trying to illustrate what your front of like your dryer looks like here. Um, so it's a square with a circle in it. So the dots, so like across all symbols, like the dots are another indicator of temperature. So one dot is like low heat and two dots is like medium heat. Whereas three is like, you can, it's safe for like a higher heat. If it's crossed out, it means don't dry. So it's pretty cool. Um, that's I helpful. Like, I don't like dryers anyways, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the ironing symbol, similarly to like the dryer is like mm -hmm. low heat, medium heat, high heat. And then with an X through it means do not iron. That's how you, I feel about all my clothes. Do not iron. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't I, like iron. <laughs> I, yeah, I only, I, honestly, I only iron clothes when I make them. Like I was wearing a linen shirt the other day. My mom's like, you should probably iron that. I'm like, mom, it's linen. It's supposed to be wrinkly. Like, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> it has more character when it's wrinkly. I love it. it I love it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, okay, so like the letter, these ones here, the letters inside of the circle, those yeah. aren't even for us. Those are if you take your clothing to the dry cleaner, it tells them oh. what, um, I guess, like, I guess it recommends like what they can do best or what kind of... Um, I guess machine process works best for it. So like, I don't even, you don't even have to worry about that one, which is good. Um, so if we like want to translate this little care label up here, it means wash with like 40 degrees Celsius water. You can't bleach it. Don't dry it, but you can iron it on a medium setting if you want. And then something for the dry cleaner, which is cool. <laughs> nice. I also like, like, I don't even memorize them. I just kind of like try and then probably most of the time Googling it, but it's a basic approach and it's actually quite helpful, I think. It um, is helpful. I mean, I suggest either like trying to like look it up on your phone. Cause sometimes these are generic symbols. Like there is a wide range of them that other people use, which I'm like, I don't understand why there's so many, but um, you can actually get these really cute, like 
laundry legend wall arts for your laundry room that have like all the symbols everywhere and I like low-key want one like I'll <laughs> see it's so cute <laughs> just so I can know like what all my curly will say <laughs> nice like some kind of like language decoder it is it is it's literally like a whole legend thing which is cool I think it's cool at least but it that's is just cool <laughs> um so conscious care just a few things like I believe that if we make an effort in our routine carefully caring for our clothing comes easy so like I said I don't like dryers I always try and hang out my clothing to dry like as much as possible because like regardless of if it says it's okay to dry the heat of a dryer like deteriorates the fibers regardless um which also like you know heightens your electricity bill and shortens the life cycle of your clothing so it's win-win there um detergent use i would say many people use more detergent than they think they need so i mean it's always important to like read the bottle also in combination if you have like high efficiency machines to like kind of know the balance but the coolest thing ever and i'm like I need to get some. There's like these laundry strips that are like, yes. Have I've you been using them? them? How yes. are they? They're, They're so good. Cool. They're really good. I love that I don't have a big bulky mess anymore. Like, cause I yep. used to, like I gone a bunch of different things, like the liquid refill, you know, my own. Um, but then I was making for the last little while, like the baking soda, yep. washing soda, and soap flakes, which was yep. also good. But now to just have this little tiny thing where I just throw in the sheets is so and it's great. Gone. Just like what? I was yeah. like, I need to get them. Like I absolutely need to get them. Yeah, they're um, good. And there's no like plastic involved, which I'm like, yes. It's they're, yeah, so it's perfect. great. I use the kind laundry ones. Okay, I'm gonna check yeah. those out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you heard of that because I've like found them and I was like. Um, where are these in my life right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, wool dryer balls. I mean, dryer sheets are the stupidest, most like single use product, almost up there with produce bags, those like plastic ones. Like, I'm just like, what is the point? You don't do anything <laughs> with it after it's done. Um, so dryer balls are awesome because I got two from a, a maker in uh, Toronto actually, and they like infused them with essential oils with me. Like we literally stuck a syringe nice. needle in them and it's just like, it's so good. But they actually like, aside from smelling good, they actually like help fluff your stuff better and they dry it faster. So it's like saves nice. you on time and fluffing things up, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's important to catch microplastics if we can. It's hard because a lot of clothes are made with like synthetic fibers. So like, how are you going to put your all of your laundry into like, a bag you know what I mean but yeah I would say high content things especially if they're older or like sorry not older but like starting to deteriorate I would say those ones you should prioritize putting in your into your microplastic bags the um, workout gear yeah exactly yeah. workout gear like and things that you wash often right like mm -hmm. if you can why not I mean, well, there's obviously a good reason to do it because it catches all of the microplastics for us and it saves you and our water. Um, and then my last thing is storage and gratitude. I actually recently introduced this into my like conscious care laundry practice. And I'm like, we take our clothing for granted. And it's like important to show gratitude for the clothing you wear because it protects you and your body and allows you to express yourself. So a great way to show gratitude for your clothing is by like folding or hanging it appropriately so it can be safely stored away. I also like to even, you know, just in my mind, not even out loud, but like in my mind, just be like, why do I like this garment? Like, you know, is it still relevant to me? Um, I'm thankful for it. And then I put it away in a nice little bundle and then store it properly. Cause like sometimes I used to just like leave my laundry basket for days and then it just like ends from clean clothes to like being transferred out to dirty clothes. <laughs> And then it's just like, oh, okay. But I find that I actually appreciate like having a clean closet in regards to how my clothing makes me feel, if that makes sense. Makes complete sense. I'm actually looking at like stuff that I haven't <laughs> put away hanging on my rack and, and like a full load to go in the laundry. Like, 
<laughs> but it's also like it, we all have a lot like I am exactly saying we have a lot of clothing but it's also like we need to appreciate it just as much as anything else too right um but also like natural fiber garments like I'm not sure if you've ever experienced this but they tend to attract bugs that eat holes in clothing like my sweaters are like my prized possessions so like seasonality of them like putting them away I I'm terrified sometimes but now I start I store them with like I store them in a bin like a plastic tote which is like ideal but then lavender and cedar help repel bugs so like adding some scent to even just to your closet um and your clothing can help like literally save them which is pretty cool that's good advice yeah (laughs) um okay so end of life cycle this is the last little topic um so will i am says waste is only waste if we waste it and i'm so into that like i'm like yes touches everything because it's really rethinking it's rethinking um what waste is um so if you're thinking of getting rid of something the main thing to do is to identify why and kind of rethink the problem so does it have a hole or is it stained is it too big or is it too small or is it just not your style anymore and i've got a bank of solutions for you so (laughs) dying stained clothing this is goes back to why i don't own much white (laughs) um dying stained clothing has been a lifesaver for me today i have like a lighter color t-shirt and i spill something on it which is very highly likely because i'm quite clumsy (laughs) um i'll just dye it a darker color whether it be like using natural dyes or you can even get like synthetic dyes that you could just put in your washing machine and it dyes stuff for you. So me and my boyfriend collectively, we like put together our clothes that we need to like revamp. And then we all end up with like matching color, like tops and coordinating outfits, which is kind of funny, but it's all the same color and it like makes it last longer. So it's awesome. Um, The mending holes, I think like a lot of people just think like mending holes to like, is just for like bringing it back to how it looked when you bought it. But there's also like, patchwork that can be done which is kind of cool it accentuates your clothing there's this really cool kind of mending that's called like it's called sashiko mending and it's literally like you put a patch onto it or like fold it around an area that needs to be mended then it's like loud it's like out there it's like being like i just got fixed and then it's like stitched on to re-secure it and it's like it's awesome because it like kind of plays out to like oh this garment is a little bit more unique because it had a default you know what i mean um so altering clothing fit is another option too like if you're just like oh it's too small or too big clothing can be altered if it is i would say on not super fast fashion can usually be altered to increase and decrease size which is pretty cool so like as someone who worked in tailoring you can't say it's minimally you can get a minimal increase in size but mostly you can decrease the size and then you it doesn't have to be permanent so if you like fluctuate then you can like get it changed back, which is cool. It doesn't even cost that much if you go to your tailor or like even like a dry cleaning shop, they can usually do it. Um, And then consignment, I'm actually, my studio right now is located in the consignment store that my family opened. It's called the Relove Boutique. It's in Hamilton, it's really cute. Um, (laughs) And- I did not know that was your family. That's so cool. I've heard of it. It's very cool. My my mom opened it during COVID, crazy times. And I've got my like studio in the basement, which is nice. Um, That's awesome. Road trip. Amazing. Yeah, things are okay. Yeah, seriously. (laughs) Um, But like, it's a great way to make extra cash um, on the side mostly places that do consignment offer store credit (laughs) and not all places are looking like for super luxurious high quality garments which is a misconception I find people are like oh no one's gonna want this but if it's still a good garment like you'd be surprised at like what how many clothes people have in their closets that they're just not using and like what other people are buying like it is so interesting to be kind of behind the scenes and seeing what happens when you like have all the stuff on the floor it's really cool um but store credit, it's awesome. You can you don't feel like you're like spending money to shop either. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things. Um, upcycling. So whether you find a way to do it yourself, like I use a lot of upcycling in my fashion designer practice to extend life cycles of textiles and garments. Um, honestly, like YouTube is probably your best friend here. There's 
a video to like upcycle like everything <laughs> almost um but I would also recommend joining some of like your local like Facebook groups and whatnot because like there's so many people out there that are like readily excited to upcycle garments like I the other day on like I think it was Powell's trading zone um this girl yes. was like yeah <laughs> she was like calling out to like making she was making these beautiful like meditation mats out of like tattered cotton shirts and I was just like whoa like it's so yeah. cool oh my god you're my soulmate <laughs> no like seriously I was like um this is amazing like and they were beautiful and I'm just like wow that's such a great like I never would have thought of that but like someone else is already out there doing it you know what I mean very cool um clothing swaps are also fun they make you feel like you're not alone I don't know if you've ever been to one <laughs> like I come with like clothing that I don't want and I'm just like oh wow there's more people like me who also have like a multitude of clothing that they don't want anymore but they yeah. still like want to add like fun things to their wardrobe and like why not trade for it like piece for piece which is cool so you have to think about it really um I kind of think of, I think of like donations as I like to think of it as my last option um just because I feel like people go it's like a straight go-to for a lot of people especially with like value villages and like common places to just drop off bundles of stuff um but I'm like, there's also like a lot of like communities, initiatives and places that actually could use these items instead. Like, for example, like at the end of the season at the Relove Boutique, they work with like local women shelters and like they have like these closets that they like can shop from. So anything that doesn't sell on the floor that people don't want it back, we donate to them. And it's like really cool to see that happen. But I'm like, even if like people take the effort to just be like, oh, like call ask like it's in worst case scenario it's just they're gonna say no like we don't need it but I think like reaching out to the people that actually could use stuff is kind of like the best way to donate my that's such value. a good point yeah my yeah. aunt my aunt volunteers with this organization so I used to just go and help them out but like it's called open door and it's in Mississauga and basically like every season they have like a bunch of people donate clothing items to them and they just let like it's it's like a homeless center it's not like a shelter where people stay but like they come for meals and games and all this stuff and so they'll do like nights where they just can come and pick up whatever clothing they need and it's like like we used to sort through it to make sure it's all good quality like no rips all that stuff like things they can wear to job interviews and like so it's like super it's like even more meaningful than just like donating it to value village where it's just like another person that's gonna have to buy it exactly we used to do that when i i used to organize swaps uh, on a quarterly basis and we at the end we would like go we would split up whatever was left over so that it didn't all go to one spot and didn't like overwhelm we usually didn't end up with a lot left over yeah. but we would call ahead and find out like are you you know are you able to take this stuff first so like yeah. if you split that kind of stuff up if people are doing big purges which there's a lot of that right now too because there is a lot fun. <laughs> um but the yeah that, that's that. <laughs> that? the consignment store is stocked because of covid basically like. right right <laughs> but yeah i mean so yeah that's my kind of concepts of conscious wardrobe and thank you oh my gosh so good I can't wait to go back and like look at some of this stuff in more depth and but now I feel like more confident when I'm gonna look at a tag and when it oh yay awesome. I'm glad you could take that away because <laughs> I feel like it's important when I learned my laundry legend I was like why don't they teach this to people in school like honestly <laughs> yeah doesn't even take that much it just takes a like exactly like you did just a few minutes to just be like this is what it is and you're like oh well that makes sense it doesn't look like a completely different language now I exactly it's not it. like it doesn't look like hieroglyphics anymore like which I'm yeah. like that's how I used to feel about yeah, exactly. it. <laughs> um Lynn do you have any questions at all before I go to the lightning round questions oh um they're just I don't know you might have answered this when I was MIA from this call but I'm going to ask it in case you haven't answered it um in terms of your own work and your own brand is there anything that you need that you're looking for that you're like oh if I could just have a donation of this type of item or this type of material or something like Hmm. is there anything specific or like when you do have things that you might need like where can we find you how do we know 
oh I'm open to accepting things whenever it's honestly like I it's bad like I'm like a hoarder of clothing like just to be upcycled <laughs> like if I showed you my studio right now you'd be like oh my gosh you have so much but I know it's gonna have an end purpose I am a lover of denim like anything denim I will upcycle indefinitely okay. um also sweaters like things with holes in it I'm I'm trying to gain my stockpile of sweaters because I have something in mind that I want to do with them um so that's pretty cool but I should like honestly like to be I should reach out more to people and be like, hey, anyone got any old like this that they don't want anymore to be upcycled because I think it could be more of like a community effort. I feel like I, I'm sitting on a lot right now, but I am always open to like accepting more. What's a few more pieces, right? <laughs> I just feel like it's such a cool idea that like now that I know that you accept stuff and like you can turn it into cool stuff if I'm like I don't wear these jeans anymore because they're all like stretched out because that's what happens to jeans yeah. or like they rip in the wrong place which also happens yeah. to jeans I'm like but yeah. I can make like Lex can make something super dope for me so I'm gonna give it to yeah. her instead of just because when things rip like I don't want to donate them because who's gonna buy jeans with the hole in the butt nobody right nobody should wear those <laughs> um so like to know that this is something that like there is a skilled human being who can turn this into something amazing. I think that's just like mm -hmm. super, super cool. So yeah, no, I like think that it also kind of goes back to having a more localized like community of artisans because like once you know, for example, that like oh Lex has they can take denim, then it's like you know someone else like for example that lady who is making meditation mats out of cotton t-shirts like she'll take those and it's just kind of like you can break it out to like so you don't overwhelming one person with everything because I hate saying no to like people who are like can I give you all this stuff and I'm like yeah but I can't use it either like but right. there is someone out there who would be able to so I feel like it'd be cool to actually maybe even like have some kind of like directory of like yeah cycling like a resource of makers. Yeah. That'd be cool. That I'm would be amazing. I'm gonna think on that. <laughs> <laughs> this is another, another reason for a road trip to Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, I'm so in. Yeah, yeah, I'm from here. So it's like, it's nice to be home, but nice. it's, yeah, it's up and coming. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> the pale blue dot shop is super cute. It's, it's two doors down. <gasps> I yeah. love that little strip. It's so okay. cute. We we're yeah. definitely Sophie. This is happening. We're gonna make a road trip <laughs> hey, on it. Let's do it. It's gonna be a girls' day. Let me know. Yeah. Let, let me know when. I'd love to coordinate. No, we're but... just gonna show up. <laughs> well, people do that. I'm not like they expect. <laughs> I'm not here every day, so I'm like they come <laughs> like, oh, it's Lex here, and I'm like, no, oh, sorry, I'm in Toronto. Like, <laughs> yeah. don't but... worry, I would never do that. <laughs> I mean you That's could store's open <laughs> <laughs> um okay let's do the lightning round okay, okay. I, I um, <laughs> artificial fragrance or essential oils <laughs> um, essential oils all the way <laughs> wait is that even a question <laughs> yeah <laughs> no I, I, I'm I was like I think I know the answer um chocolate Ooh, I have one related oh. to that yeah essential oil or incense Ooh. Ooh. honestly i'm probably gonna say essential oil but mm -hmm. i do have a couple incenses i'm like i'm thinking ratios like my essential oil collections like this big, <laughs> one scent of incense so i'm gonna say essential oils is my final answer <laughs> there we go <laughs> um chocolate or vanilla can they be mixed Yes. <laughs> swirl swirl i'm like it's a better representation of two worlds colliding yeah. i like I agree. Milk chocolate, I like, like <laughs> look to the cookie the black one uh beyonce like or or rihanna oh rihanna oh that's hard i like grew up loving rihanna but beyonce is queen b so i'm like yeah <laughs> I'm gonna say Rihanna. I, I like. I think she's like a little bit out there more. So yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, you never leave home without my reusable produce bag. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm not even joking. Either that or snacks. <laughs> yeah. <These> are important. <laughs> They're probably inside my reusable produce bag that I use as a lunch bag. So <laughs> they go. go hand in hand. <laughs> Making use of it. Um, cake or pie? 
Ooh, ooh, pie. I actually made two pies, like, for Thanksgiving. What kind of pies? I made a pumpkin pie and an apple pie. Nice. I'm, like, a, such a huge ooh. fan of, like, the lattice work and intricate like I made a braided like, pumpkin pie it was beautiful I never take photos so that's the thing I'm just like I just want to eat it um but yeah. and then just like a regular apple pie but they're both good they're all gone now <laughs> yummy um ocean or mountain as a Pisces I want to be like ocean but the mountains and the tree have the trees so I'm like I'm more I think I'm gonna say mountain of the trees, yeah. Yes, yeah, they have the trees and like the nature. I was just in um, Calgary recently and we went to the Grassy Lakes Mountain Trail. It was so nice. And it was like, there's literally a lake of water like up five kilometers in after climbing this mountain. It was really cool. It's I was like, so cool. <laughs> Calgary is so cool. It's too cool. I, I just like nature though like it's just so grounding so yeah. i'm gonna have to say water is also though but there are sharks so <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> i feel you i feel you yeah. i'm on that mountain with you <laughs> um okay while you're walking music or podcasts oh podcasts for sure yeah. and i like, I'm a huge fan of techno music. I actually like DJ a little bit on the side, which is fun. Ooh, <laughs> um, but that, that's why I save my music for, like, the decks. Whereas, like, headphones, I'm like, the sound quality isn't good enough. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> podcast time. <laughs> um, but I'm like, ugh, I don't know. I'm really into, like, true crime, like, podcasts. I don't know if that's weird, but, like. I no, it's not are weird. Because <laughs> there's a huge industry for it. But I don't know. I'm like really into it. So I listen to podcasts mostly during walks. True crime obsessed. Anybody? Anybody listen to that one? No. I haven't anyway. heard that one, but I need a new one soon. I've like binged. Um, I've been recently listening to Sword and Scale. I don't know if you've heard of it. Oh no. It's got there's like a bajillion episodes. It gets pretty like gruesome though. So I'd be like forewarned. But it's like okay. real. Wait, what's like, it called monster. again? Um sword, like sword and then yeah. scale. Sword and scale. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm gonna look that up. Yeah. That's um, cool. one beauty product you can't live without. Hmm. I want to say like, I mean, does lotion count? Like shea butter? Like does that yeah. count as a beauty? I don't really do. Yes, it does. Does. <laughs> but I'm like, yes. my hair needs moisture. My skin you needs with moisture. The like, I, I can't <laughs> live without it. <laughs> nice. Uh, favorite sustainable life hack. Hmm. Sustainable life hack. That's interesting. I'm like hack or just like evolution. Tip of, <laughs> um, oh, I saved my egg cartons to grow plants in them later. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. I have one more, but maybe Lynn, do you have any other ones? No. Okay. I was enjoying yours. Okay. Yes. So keep going. <laughs> Thank you. Courtesy of Adriana. Courtesy of her. Um, dogs or cats? Both. Yes. I I had a cat, but I grew up like I've had a cat when I moved to Toronto. I adopted one, um, and it was fantastic. He passed away, but like it's okay. Um, it happens. Um, yeah. But. He was the best company. Like I lived by myself, and it was literally just like the best company. His name was Poe. He was the cutest little guy Aww. ever. Um, and but I grew up with dogs all my life, so I have a soft spot for dogs. My mom's dog comes and visits me during the day downstairs in my studio, so it's it's nice. <laughs> Cute. But there's nothing better than animals. coming home to like a dog that's just like ah, you know, like. <laughs> 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 I haven't seen you in 25 minutes. Oh my I God. know every time. <laughs> it's gratifying. I love it. <laughs> nice. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much for um just like I feel like I've just been like educated so much about my yeah. wardrobe now. Now I'm just like, okay, now you're I looking at your laundry it. and you're like, <laughs> Yeah, I am looking at my laundry. <laughs> I'm like okay I gotta do that um but no thank you so much I really appreciate um your time and sharing your knowledge with us and uh we will we will be coming to Hamilton to visit please do so I would love mark, that. I would mark love my that. words 
<laughs> but I'm we will let you know. Now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks so much. And anyone who's watching, um, share with us anything that you learned today um, by tagging us. Um, you can do like hashtag Weasolation or at Plastic Free TO at Ne. Okay, so it's Neot Neotony. Yeah, Am Neotony. I yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, it is Neotony. Okay. Ne neotony. Like neotony. I need to put like the ph phonetic like pronunciation. Like neotony. think like your knee and then your knee ought to and then me. <laughs> oh, neotony. Got it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Is it neotony apparel? Yes. That's yes. Correct. Okay. Um yeah. and uh your eco friend and uh inwit.to. Yes. And that's that's it. <laughs> like we added it some more. Okay. So if you learn anything today, please share with us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, everyone. Yes. Yeah, Bye. Thanks, all. Bye.